It's no secret that AI has become a part of our lives and has been a dominant topic of conversation for quite some time. Yet, through it all, the whole notion of AI can still feel intimidating, overwhelming, and confusing. So the point of this video is to help break down, describe, and define some of the more common types of AI you might read about, hear mentioned at work, or reference in a conversation. Now, granted, AI is a whole field of study that can get rather deep and murky real quick. And this video is in no way intended to be comprehensive, rather to simplify the more common types of AI you'll encounter by giving you some foundational knowledge so, at the very least, you'll have an idea of what they're talking about. Because your time is valuable, let's list out the types of AI we'll discuss up front, and you can either learn all about them or jump to a specific topic using the timestamps below. Okay, let's get into it. The types of AI we'll cover in this video are generative AI, large language models or LLMs, natural language processing or NLPs, robotic process automations or RPAs, cognitive computing, effective computing, and predictive AI. How about we kick things off with generative AI because you can make the case that this type is the one currently dominating the AI conversation and getting all the headlines. Generative AI essentially does what the name implies. This type of AI will generate, think create, new content, say for example, text, images, audio, or code through the instructions that you give it. Put another way, you type in what you want and the AI will create it. The text you type in is commonly referred to as prompts and being able to type in effective prompts is a skill worth learning. Now, generative AI is a very broad category and its real benefit stems from its ability to enhance and streamline creativity, which makes it a useful tool in the fields like content creation, design, education, and even software development. Some of the major players that use generative AI include ChatGPT and Google Gemini, which are primarily known for creating text-based responses. For image generation, you can use such sites like Midjourney, Dolly, Leonardo AI, Stable Diffusion, and Runway ML. If you're into music generation, you can look at such sites as Suno, Udio, Ava, and SoundRaw. For AI voice generation, Eleven Labs pretty much dominate the AI voice space, with PlayHT potentially giving Eleven Labs a run for its money. Next up is large language models or LLMs. The idea behind this type of AI is that its intent is to understand, interpret, translate, and generate human language. Essentially, LLMs mimic conversations between people. The main places you'll encounter some LLMs include the ever so fun customer support chatbots found on some websites. Siri and Alexa can also be considered an LLM because they interpret requests and respond conversationally. You'll also encounter LLMs on such platforms like Jasper AI and Copy AI because of the interactional aspects. And we might as well include Google Translate as an LLM as well. Moving on, let's take a look at Natural Language Processing or NLP. Now, natural language processing can get pretty heavy, but an oversimplified description would be it focuses on the communication between computers and humans by breaking the text prompt into individual pieces, think words, trying to figure out the emotion behind the words of what was said with the goal of ultimately responding appropriately. While natural language processing may sound very similar to the LLMs we just discussed, the main difference is the natural language processing is broader and also includes interpreting emotional tone and generating new content may not be required. Put another way, NLPs are more about interpreting language than producing it. Some places where you'll find natural language processing include Grammarly, which is something you probably heard of, Quillbot, because it helps improve your writing, and other places like IBM's Watson and Amazon Comprehend. Next up, let's take a look at robotic process automation or RPAs. The good news is robotic process automation is very direct and easy to understand and most likely something you've already encountered. In a nutshell, RPAs use software or bots to automate repetitive mundane tasks performed by people. RPAs don't get involved with language comprehension, rather they follow predefined rules and workflows with their sole purpose being to free up people so they can do more intricate tasks. RPAs are often integrated with other applications as well, and some examples of where you'll find RPAs in the workplace include 
automating responses to customer inquiries, managing ticket systems, automating invoices and expense reportings, even up to automating data collection, lead generation, and campaign management. Some of the major players in the RPA market include UiPath, Pega, Appian, and Microsoft Power Automate. Moving right along, let's take a look at cognitive computing. This type of AI tries to mimic the way humans solve problems and apply reasoning. In super simple terms, cognitive computing processes data to assist in making decisions. It can learn from past experiences and improve over time by understanding, reasoning, and learning from human-like interactions. You'll often find this type of AI being used in such industries as finance, because it can analyze trends, and in healthcare, where it can assist in diagnoses. Some of the major players in the cognitive computing camp include IBM Watson, Salesforce Einstein, and Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services. Next up on our list is effective computing. Effective computing has been designed to understand and respond to human emotions. It's capable of detecting emotional signals like facial expressions, tone of voice, body language, with the goal of creating a more empathetic communication. This type of AI is often used in customer service, mental health applications, and entertainment. Some of the major players in this field are Alexa, Siri, Replica, and Cogito. Next on our list is predictive AI. Predictive AI looks at past data and makes a guess about the future. In short, it will look at patterns, then use those patterns to try to predict what might happen next. Although my hunch is you've already seen predictive AI in action. For example, if you're on Netflix, Spotify, maybe you've shopped on Amazon, or even watch YouTube videos, you've already experienced predictive AI through the suggestions it makes to you. All right, so let's recap. As mentioned, the ultimate goal of this video has been to help you to understand the types of AI that are out there and might be mentioned during the course of your everyday life. And you may have noticed that some companies often use multiple types of AI in their products, which is often the case. So with any luck, this video has been able to give you a guide in how to interpret what is going on out there, all the while recognizing that this video barely scratches the surface of what's happening in the overall AI world. That said, we've got some other awesome AI tutorials for you to check out. We hope you've enjoyed it. Please feel free to share your thoughts and comments below. Don't be shy about sharing and liking this video, and we will see you next time.